Hi artists, I'm so sorry I can't be at school with you today, but I wanted to do a demo just to show you what the next steps are after you finish painting the background on your impossible triangle and you're ready to start painting within the actual shape. So again, you always need to have your example nearby so you have a very clear idea in your own head of what colors you're placing on the onto the actual paper, onto your board, and where you're gonna be blending them. Remember that these little triangle pieces here, this corner here, this corner here, and this corner right here are your lightest areas. You sh your plan should be following this image over here. So I'm gonna prep my palette first. Again, the color that I chose for my triangle is blue and white. And so I'm gonna show you my palette first. So I've chosen blue and white. Again, I have both of those here. If you've chosen two different colors like purple and red or even purple, red, and blue, you wanna have those on your palette. And then I suggest making a couple of the tints or shades in between before you even start. So kind of like a little value scale. So here I'm gonna put a little bit of white into a new cup. And then I'm gonna add just a little bit of blue so I get a nice, pale blue. And then I'm gonna do the next sort of color in between this blue and this blue. I'll take some blue here, put it into a cup. And then add just a bit of white. Again, and what this does is it gives me kind of those steps before I even start painting. I already have a little bit of that transition, which is gonna make it easier for me to blend as I paint. So again, as always, I have my cup of water nearby. I have my palette and my painting, and then I'm going to keep, again, my reference so I know where I'm gonna be painting. So I'm gonna start with this segment right here, and I know that it goes dark to light to dark, dark to light to dark. So that means my brightest blue is here, medium blue, white, medium blue, my pure blue. I'm gonna use my square paintbrush again. I'm gonna turn my paper so it feels like I'm painting toward myself. I'm gonna load my paintbrush with that bright blue. And again, this is where your craftsmanship really counts, being very careful to stay within the lines. This should be a slow process. And remember, you can always paint more coats if you feel like you need more. If it's looking a little bit um, like you don't have enough coverage on the board. So I've put that blue down. I'm actually now gonna go to the lightest area and I'm gonna put that white down. Again, I'm gonna turn my board so I'm pulling toward myself. And I'm gonna pull this white down into this area. And I'm gonna take a little bit of that light blue and I'm gonna blend that right on the board. I'm using the biggest paintbrush right now. You may wanna take your medium brush, just have it damp, and you can use that clean, damp brush to blend. There's no paint on this brush. I'm just using that to blend and transition. I'm doing short little brush strokes. When I do that, you can see that that helped that transition a little bit more to make it a little bit more smooth. I'm gonna take a little bit more of that medium blue that I had. And then a little bit of that next shade of blue. 
And again, our goal is we wanna have a nice smooth transition between these colors and using your biggest paintbrush probably won't give you that smooth transition. It's a great way to get the color down on the board, but the blending really happens with your smaller paintbrush. You may have to take that bright color, that end darkest color and blend back in this way. And sometimes I'll just get my brush damp and clean and use that for blending. I'll zoom in a little so you can see that my transition here is looking a little bit better. Right here, I've got a step that's much too harsh. So I'm gonna wash out my little brush. Again, it's just clean and damp right now. This paint is still wet, so I can go in Make sure it's not too watery. You don't want water on your board. And I'm gonna blend that transition in there. And you can see that's looking better now. And then I have another step transition right here that I wanna smooth out as well. So again, a clean, damp, brush and I'm just smoothing that edge out. Now this can take you quite a while to go back and forth and blend all these colors together. So take your time. And again, sometimes just using a clean brush to move the color around is the way to go. If you're not liking how it's looking, my best advice is always to stop, let it dry, and then you can always paint on top of it. But if the paint is wet, it's not going to work very well if you're trying to make any big changes. So let it dry so then you can cover it up later on. All right, so I'm liking how that is looking. I'm going to turn my board now again, so I'm going to pull toward myself. I'm going to take my big paintbrush again. Make sure that it's clean. I'm gonna start up here at the top, my white. And I'm gonna work my way down. Take a little bit of that light blue. And again, I'm not really blending it yet. I'm just trying to kind of get the, those general colors down careful with your edges so you don't go outside of your lines. Again, that's why using this nice square brush helps. Take that medium blue now. And I know I have a big transition here to blend, but that's okay. As long as I don't let that dry too much before I get back to blending it. And then I'm gonna use my brightest blue now. All right, so I have my nice transition here. Now again, I'm gonna take that medium brush that's clean and flat. I'm gonna add just a tiny bit of dampness to it, not too much water at all. I'm gonna go back in and I'm gonna blend this. Now, what do you do if your paint is dry and it's not wanting to blend? No problem, you can just take a little bit more of whatever color that is, place it down one more time and go back and blend it as needed. So again, I've done some blending there. I'm looking at this big step transition happening right there. I'm gonna wash out my brush.
just blend that. And again, you gotta do this relatively quickly. If you don't, your paint is gonna start drying on you. So if that happens, just go get some more paint out of your palette and you can blend those together right on the board as needed. Notice how I'm only painting in one direction. I'm just going up and down. I'm not going side to side. Some students prefer going side to side. If you wanna paint this direction, you can do that. Just be really careful with your edges. When you paint side to side, it's really easy to go outside of your lines. And again, I'm working a little bit faster than I normally would on a video because I don't wanna make this too long for you guys to watch, but I want you to see kind of this process as I go. And you may have to go over areas a couple times and that's totally normal. Don't think that you're going to do it one time and it's going to be perfect. As we know that that rarely happens in art class, we usually have to do things a couple times to get them right. I'm gonna try this one more time. There we go, that's better. The last one I wanna blend is right back up here again. There we go. So I have one section of my painting done. I'm gonna keep doing the last two. I'll put it into a time lapse so you can kind of see the process as I go. and there I have my finished blended triangle. I may decide to go back once this is dry and maybe do a second coat or do a little bit more blending in all these areas. I still have all my paint and notice how much paint I still have. This didn't take very much to do, so it is worth your time to, you know, if I would have just started with blue and white and that's it and blended all that on here by, on the actual board, it would have been a lot harder. It was nice having these kind of steps in between and you can do multiple steps if you want to um, on your palette and then just keep that and go over your lines a couple more times if you would like to. Let me know if you have any questions. Um, do not pull the tape off of the board. We are gonna be doing that together in class. So if you feel like you are done, please resist that temptation to pull this tape off the board. I'm gonna show you how to do that next time in a way that's not gonna rip the edge of your painting. Thanks everyone, I'll see you soon.